YouTubes, we're gonna head up to a call. We got a walk-in box at a liquor store that is iced up. Let's get out there and see if we can figure out why it iced up. And get it de-iced, get it cooling so the beers can get cold and whatnot. Let's see how we make out here. All right, first thing I noticed, that's way too low. Frosting. Coils iced up. Coils dirty. Iced up to the max. Iced up coilitis. I like this. One strapper. Check. We got a one strapper over Breaker One Nine. We got. We're gonna go one strapper. I might have one on the van. We'll put a second strapper on there. Uh, breaker one nine, we got a one strapper. All right, this is looking like a total Sideshow Bob special. And they always get my number and call me. So I got this hanging. I got the nut right here. So maybe we could do a quick patch job right here. On our liquid tight. laughing because I want to see I think this probe I want to see what they were doing with this like what the hell is this right here and then he showed me a timer that was downstairs that he thought went to this thing and then it's got this defrost timer up here that's all goofy So it's a yellow, oh, a gray probe. It's a gray probe that's going down to the box. There's no reason to have external wires up here. This should just run off the pressure switch because it has a solenoid valve downstairs. The solenoid valve should just get power off the evaporator circuit, which should be 115 volts, and then this should be 208, 230. And then this would just bang off the uh, pressure control. Definitely Sideshow Bob install. Okay, those gray wires that went up to the condensing unit went to this old evaporator control. That was a company that was out years and years and years ago that would slow down your fan motors when they got to, uh, look at this. <laughs> that would slow down your evap fan motors when you got to set point. And then speed them back up when you had a call. And uh, we'll have to see if, if it even still works. Usually they would break and we would just bypass them. Just run the fans on high fan speed, old school style. Oh, damn. I don't know. I don't know why the coil would have iced up. Speed things, speed, speed things up a little bit here. You can't really diagnose the unit until you get all the ice off. Get your coils clean, right? We're gonna have to clean those fan guards, probably the fan blades. Yeah, this coil's plugged. And then, uh, and then we can fire off the system and see why or why it's not working. 
we're gonna we're gonna clean both coils the outdoor unit and the indoor unit i got the rinse kit pro over there we'll get it inside the box and get the coil i got the ice off the back of the coil there might still be some ice on the front my hunch is that the uh i'm still thinking the uh it kind of has that look like it was low on charge but these these have to come off and get cleaned and it's all about airflow in a walking box right i got the rinse kit i'm gonna wash the back the back of this coil and scrub on it it's pretty it needs some tlc big time we'll see if we can get some, get some scrubbing going yeah see the top of that coil is dry this thing is probably low on charge See, we can make another coil turd. We've got the makings of a coil turd coming together here. Mmm, <laughs> tasty. Mmm, tasty. All right, we're scrubbing. We got the coil cleaner soaking in. I need to pull the, the grills off and wash them. And I'm going to rinse it out real good. You can't even see the fan blades, dude. That's some funny shit. Look at this turd. Oh, working at it. Look, I got big hands. That's a big old turd right there. Coil turd. Biggin. Getting the fan cards and the blades off. And then look at the leading edge of these fan blades. <laughs> I'm probably the first guy that's done this in a hundred years. I got all my fan guards off and my fan blades off. I'm going to take the end cover off so we can take a look at the TXV. And I'm thinking it's probably a flared TXV. What do you guys think? Sweat or flare? <coughs> Let's put some stuff out of the way here. Let's see what we're getting into. All right, caddy corner screws, quarter inch. All right, check this out. Look, old TXV bulb from the old TXV. <laughs> flare nut on there but they did do a nice job getting the TXV in not bad not bad so hey there's that all right let's go do some washing So plugged. Dude, you can make a giant coil turd out of all that stuff. These are empties. I'm gonna get them wet and then I'm gonna scrub them with the brush and then clean them up. You know the drill. Tasty, oh so tasty. All right, we got these guys soaking and we're gonna give them a scrub. We'll give them a scrubber and then a big old rinse off. We got these pretty good. You can see through them now. A little bit of metal left on there, a little bit of rust. And we'll get these cleaned up and we'll, uh, I gotta wash that coil out. I'm going to take this hose up to the roof because the roof's right here. We'll wash that condenser out real good. And we'll get that EVAP cleaned up. And then we'll restart the unit. Get this condenser good and scrubbed. 
So even though it looked kind of clean, man, there's some shit coming out of there every time. This will give us a nice refresh where to start at. I had let that coil cleaner soak in there real good. Oh yeah, she's making some chocolate milks. And there's a little chunk of Titus coming out of there. That's just, just to get a good restart. So this is right, so what I've done so far in this video is the obvious, right? We still gotta figure out why did this coil lights up? Now you guys asked me in my videos before why why is there outdoor units and i think it's the wholesale houses sell us these outdoor units because we're in california you know it doesn't snow here so we get in the ambience don't get super low and they get away with it and you'll find this all over my videos all over my areas they just sell they sell outdoor units and if you bid if you're bidding against someone and you bid an in, uh, outdoor unit and it's all these indoor units, then they hire Sideshow Bob because price is less. So I hope that answers that question. But you'll see this all over. All over. I do it too. I'm guilty. Look at that. All cleaned up. I kind of made a mess with the rinse kit. I got the bags all cleaned up. Ready to rock. I got a strap for the TXV. We're going to add a strap there the bulb then I'll let this coil dry out we'll get the coil dried out and then we'll fire this thing off and run some tests all right we got our second strap on tight as a drum Let's see if I got any insulation on the truck all right another another mystery that this time clock actually goes to that condensing unit so whoever put the condensing unit in didn't even know. <laughs> and the guys that work here showed me that. But the clock's all jackered. Doesn't do nothing. So they've been using it as an on-off switch. Unbelievable. All right, this thing's restarted. Uh, 404A65 on the, on the low side. That's the same as having a gauge, if you guys didn't know. That shows your pressure through the, tr the transducer on the low side. Side glass is clear. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the high side and see what our head pressure looks like. Then I want to, uh, I'm going to do a pump down test through the thermostat. <clears throat> Make sure the solenoid valve doesn't leak by. That's probably obvious for ice up. And then we'll carry on here. All right, right at 111. Condensing. I'm fine with that. The box is hot as hell and it's it's pretty damn hot up here. It's probably 90 degrees. Um, so I'm good with that. So let me go try a pump down test. First, I'm going to pump it down right here at the king valve. That'd be the, the easiest. Maybe that'll also tell us if we got a big old overcharge too. We can see how our head pressure falls on pump down.
right down there cuts off at eight. So all that part of the system is good. Now I just gotta make sure the solenoid uh, seals off and we'll go do a pump down test from the thermostat. All right, listen to that, can you hear that? I wonder if the defrost timer smoked out. We'll see if it advances. That sounds a bit rough. There we go, it came out of our time delay. Our unit's back on, 814520. See how that's doing. Whoa. Uh Luke, who doesn't have a time clock today? I need a 421 ABD O2C too. All right, bro. I'm having a supply chain issue. <laughs> got dryers though oh hey let's chat for a second i i ended up having to get a i ended up buying some 134a and i you can't get away from 404 and i'm going to tell you why now i'm switching a ton of stuff to 448 and using it as much as possible ice makers i couldn't get away from the 404a because of the ice machines that one got me um if you get an old ice maker, don't try and put 448A in there. It's not going to work out too good for you. Don't ask me how I know. I'll never, I'll never tell. Just turn the stat up. Then we're going to go up on the roof and check our pump down test. Box cooling off nicely. This is interesting. Turn the stat off. I made it back around to here. Solenoid valve de energized. You can see the suction pressure has dropped down to 20. It hasn't fully, it hasn't fully sealed off and come down all the way yet. I wonder if it's squeaking by if there's a piece of junk stuck in that solenoid valve. It's just sitting there. Oh, it actually went up one. It's 21. So we are not pumping down through the thermostat. So my solenoid valve is bleeding by. It has to be. All right, so the solenoid valve definitely is not shutting off all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and pump it down and take that solenoid valve apart and see if maybe we could find a piece of debris in it or something. Maybe stretch the spring out and see if it'll seal better. But it's definitely not shutting off. Let's see how we do now. I got the king valve shut off. It should pump down. Here she comes. That's absolutely the reason why the box iced up and probably with the frost pattern that it had it's because the solenoid was not sealing off all the way correctly I'm in a pickle it's Friday night I don't have a 3-8 solenoid on my truck I used the last one and I haven't restocked it yet so I'm gonna see if I can rehabilitate the one that's in there I got the solenoid apart I didn't see anything on it it's hard to tell if it got heated up um, that Teflon from the spring pressure right here closes off that little port right there. I have nothing on that port. So what I did is I stretched the spring out a little bit to see if it'll put a little more closing pressure on it. All the magnet does on your coil when it gets a call sucks this up magnetically crank and when there's no magnet the spring pressure pushes down and closes off your solenoid valve and that's it very basic stuff I'm not a huge fan of the Danfoss ones I like Sportland better but I've been burned by all of them so 
to each their own. All right, I'm gonna open up this king valve. The solenoid does not have a call for cool. We'll see if it seats or not, or if it leaks by. If it leaks by, I'll have to get him a new solenoid valve. That is a big lose. 29, yeah, it's leaking by. And that's the issue. The old dirty rotten solenoid valve. The time clock is advancing, even though it sounds like junk. I'll we'll probably get him a new time clock. I gotta get them a solenoid valve. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to do the manual defrost this weekend because you know they called me on a Friday. All right, that's a wrap for today on that one. I'll get a follow up when I get the parts. I ordered up a solenoid valve, a defrost timer, and the customer is gonna limp it along through the weekend. So he knows he's the one that showed me where the on-off switch was on that old defrost timer that's under the electric panel. He's gonna come in in the morning, de defrost that thing for a couple hours. And then throughout the day, I think at the end of the day, they're gonna give it a two hour banger. And then again on Sunday morning, and then again on Monday morning. And they're gonna limp that thing along until I get the parts. Cause I ordered the parts from RSD, but they won't ship, they won't UPS me till Monday. So I won't even get them till Tuesday afternoon. So I might not even do that job until Wednesday afternoon probably how it's going to play out. And that's what happens sometimes. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, there's a little subscribe clicker down there on the bottom. Hit that subscribe button and help the brother out. And uh, any questions or comments, please leave me a comment below and I'll catch you on the next video. That did he sped it up? He put the afterburners on and got moving real quick. That was cool. All right, well, yesterday they called and said this thing wasn't making ice. I told them to unplug it, so they must have unplugged it, plugged it back in, and reset it. And I gotta watch it. I just got here. Look at all the ice. Um, so what I like to do is is watch it make a batch trying to observe everything where it's at right now in its ice making pattern I'm not worried about refrigerant charge or the TXV at the moment because it's making uniformed ice See? it's not short or missing it's uniform uniformed ice I like that the ice sickness probe looks pretty decent I don't see any scuzz the ice looks a little thin Picking that up a hairball. And now it's just watch. Watch it make an ice cycle, go into harvest. Oh, right there, it went into harvest too soon. Not even touching, do you see that? So I got a sh I have a shorted out uh, ice thickness probe. I need to replace the ice thickness probe, wow. Okay, piece of cake. Okay, I got the skinny. It's only 87 in here. Clock's way off.
right, here's the unit. The story I got a lot of water coming out. Uh, they turned the breaker off because water was dripping in the store yesterday. And I just turned this back on and that much water's coming out. I got a feeling the coil had iced up on this one yesterday. So let's, uh, let's open her up and see what happens. All right, so I got it opened up. Right now the coil is not iced up, but there is a bunch of residue. You can see the water down there. And the filters, pretty soggy. Went ahead and took the drain apart, even though it was draining, it's pretty clean. Um, and then I cleaned it back that way into the unit, got some schmutz out. And uh, we'll get this back together and gauge up on it. Started it back up. It doesn't look like the uh, like we'd be low on charge. If anything, it looks like it probably has too much gas to me. Big of a head pressure, but it's got a hell of a load on it right now too. So I think what I found here was that there's no cl the clock's not set on the thermostat, and I found it pegged at like 68 degrees on the hold button so I need to program the thermostat let it run and then see if it ices up again